My name is H. John Mejia. I'm an American entrepreneur and marketing sales strategist. I'm also involved in the TV and digital media world. And over the years, I've worked with top companies and interviewed thousands of people. From billionaire business moguls to top political figures to movie stars, celebrities, and superstar athletes. Yeah, those who are at the top of their game. I've always had a passion for meeting people and learning about their journey to get deeper insight about who they are and what they did to achieve their success. That's exactly why I was inspired to be part of this show with Hammer Fiber Studios to share my business experiences as it relates to media, marketing, sales, and entrepreneurship, giving insights and strategies that can help take business to the next level. So get ready to enter the zone with the Business Zone TV show right here, right now. All right, we are back for episode five of the Business Zone TV show with H. John Mejia right here from the Hammer Fiber dot biz studio. And I'm your co-host, Bobby D. And from a business perspective, H. Mejia has accomplished incredible results. And I'm going to share just a few of them with you. And uh, from, a, uh, from a startup company, he went from zero to 20 million and uh, he co-built a marketing agency that has been in business for 22 years. That company has transacted a total of over 300 million gross revenue and at one time had over 100 employees. He's been part of a multi-million dollar merger and acquisition, has built a lucrative consulting business. He's built a TV and video production agency that has produced for many national and local TV shows, including shows on Fox Sport. H. John Mejia has interviewed hundreds of celebrities, pro athletes, and movie star. He's a former college football standout and did sign a pro football contract with NFL and USL, USFL team. Tongue twister, isn't it? So that's just a few of his accomplishments. Uh, it's, it's a privilege to always have H here sharing his wisdom. Welcome back, H, for episode five. How exciting. Hey, hey, Bobby, glad to be back here at episode five, glad to be back at Hammer Fiber Studio, uh, glad to be part of the Hammer Fiber community with what you guys are doing uh, on a consistent basis. Uh, you were so good on your intro, Bobby, you were all the way good until the last four letters, the USFL. I said, my God, five episodes, Bobby has mastered the flow, and all of a sudden, <laughs> That tongue twister, man. Say that 10 times fast. Well, but, that's when you're a Frenchman. It gets in the way. What can that, I tell you? <laughs> my Canadian French uh, friend, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Bobby, that's, that's the part about being authentic and real here at the Business Zone TV show. What this show is all about, what we're all about, is helping business owners, wannabe entrepreneurs, wannabe business owners, or people who are former business owners getting back into the game, what we're all about is sharing ideas and strategies to help grow their business, to grow their entrepreneurial spirit to the next level. I want to put a caveat here, a, a little uh, disclaimer. These are my experiences. This is what I've done. Uh, so the perspectives that I have, yeah, they're tainted because it's what I've done. I'm not reteaching you regurgitated information from something that I've learned. I've been in the streets and business, uh, in building companies, working with clients, um, you know, multi-million dollar customers, uh, and these are experiences that have been well noted and well served for me. I'm hoping that maybe one idea that people that are our viewers that are watching can take one or two ideas and actually take it, have a breakthrough concept thought about it, and execute a strategy that's going to improve them to the next level. That's what the Business Zone TV show is all about, and that's why we come here on a weekly basis, Bobby. And so honored and thankful. For you guys and what you're doing on your end and giving me, giving us, giving me this platform to share these strategies, Bobby. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. And, and, and to prove your point that, you know, what you're teaching and sharing is all the, uh, the real acumen and street smart uh, knowledge that you picked up, we're going to have you pull off your shirt one of these days and show your scars. <laughs> right? Well, sure. <laughs> the show just took a turn there, Bobby. Okay. But it really did. So let, let, let's talk about um, episode four. Like we do every week, we recap the takeaways, especially for those who did not catch the episodes, a previous episode, and we will tell the viewer uh, yeah. how to find those archives at the end of this show. Yeah. 
just a quick note before I give that highlight of episode four, let me just expand on what you just said in terms of the scars. You know, I've I've been fortunate as an as a, as a kid from Jamaica Queens, New York. I've done uh, I've had some cool, pretty cool experiences. But also on that same page, on a longer page, are things that have had adversity and failures and things that didn't work out so well. Things that I had a vision for that didn't prosper. So. Those go hand in hand. One goes without, goes one with the other. And that was the theme in episode four. Episode four was powerful, as all our episodes are. Episode four was kind of a reality check, a gut check, the real life entrepreneur. Because, Bobby, as I, as I do every show, we oftentimes see the magazine front page cover of the billion, do, a billion dollar high tech company that uh, some 22 year old uh, started. And we think of that as the entrepreneur, but the real life entrepreneur, the true reality of the majority of the people of the 22 million single solopreneurs working in a business uh, in the marketplace, 22 million are single owner companies, businesses. Uh, the reality is every entrepreneur has their own adversity, Bobby. They have their own struggles when they start with nothing or they've built something up and get knocked down to nothing. I shared with my stories last uh, week, my personal show stories uh, in this 20-some-odd journey of a marketing agency as we were building it up, uh, the challenges that we went through and, and 100 plus employees making payroll every week, a quarter of a million dollar uh, payroll and expense nut to, to capture, uh, to, to commit to every week and, and make that happen. I interviewed Nick Friedman, right, the CEO, the founder, co-founder of and president of, of College Hunks Hauling Junk and Moving Company. And he talks about when they could not take any paychecks, couldn't take pay for their employees when they went through some bumps in the road. We also talked and interviewed last week. Uh, Rhonda Shear was on a segment interview that I had done with her prior. And she talked about in her mid-40s, starting from nothing after a life in Hollywood, her and her new a husband starting from nothing to go on and build an $85 million a year fashion company. So the bottom line is entrepreneurs will be tested. You're going to be challenged. You better be strong and have a commitment to what your vision is doing to have a strong stomach. Because it's like living in Florida, as I always say, Bobby. We, we get great weather all year round, but we know there are going to be storms that are going to hit. Just like an entrepreneur... And just like in life, you're going to have storms that are going to hit and cause you adversity and challenges. You need to find your path. You need to find your success and know that when you get through the storm, you stay through your path and you don't quit. When you get on the other side of being challenged and tested, you're going to find the person that you become during that process, Bobby, is the, uh, is the person that you evolve into, that you can be proud of, where you'll be stronger more committed. Uh, so as an entrepreneur, all I can say is it's, a, it's, it's an incredible journey. It's every day is different. It's a fast track. Uh, it's fun. But the most important thing you need to do is get started. You have a dream for a business, get started. Make that first sale. Get that first experience. Know that you need to be comfortable in being uncomfortable. Know that you need to be comfortable, Bobby, in being uncomfortable as an entrepreneur. And of course, I'm always available hjohnmejia.com, hjohnmejia.com for as a resource to help people, guide people uh, all along through the sales uh, business process. Beautiful. Great, great recap. So now for episode five, uh, what's your vision of insights uh, yeah. to share with the audience today, H? I'm so excited in preparing for episode five. Episode five is going to be another uh, high impact information section and it's going to be powerful. Episode five, we're going to talk about incentive marketing. I want to say that again, Bobby. Incentive marketing using travel as the reward vehicle. Mm. Incentive marketing using travel as the reward vehicle. So let me start with the basic. What is the definition of incentive? You know, the dictionary uses the word incentive is adding a thing that motivates or encourages one to do something. Let me say that again. An incentive is adding a thing that motivates or encourages one to do something. Paraphrase that, you're adding value to the business transaction. 
you're adding value to the relationship. You're adding value to do business with you versus your competition. You want to stand out and create what we call differentiation, Bobby, mm -hmm. because there are so many – with this digital information age that we have, with this crazy 24-7 product that we have to the digital world, the global community that we have, with that access, also we have so many people flocking to it. So getting recognized and standing out with differentiation is really important. I started back in my career – uh, with the startup company CMC, now CMC Meridian, back in 1995. And as an incentive marketing agency, what we did, what we've done all these 20 plus years and still do today as part of the Meridian, CMC Meridian uh, umbrella brand, is that we work with companies and help companies position themselves to add value to the sales process for their customer. I want to say that again. What we do is we work with companies and we help establish them by adding value with incentive marketing to help them generate more sales to their customers. Uh, this is really a critical nugget here. Our position, our overall posture is that we suggest that it's imperative that you maintain price integrity. You, made, you add value to the deal, you don't discount the deal. I'll say it again. It's imperative, Bobby, that you add value to the deal of your pricing and not discount the deal. Why do you feel that is important? Why do I feel that is important? Because the reality is you cannot muscle with the big companies that decide to come in and that anybody can undercut market pricing. Understand, Bobby? Anybody can under, undercut you in market pricing. Some competitors who aren't strong will do it in a stupid manner and they'll undercut the market and they'll drive the price down. That's going to run them out of business and ultimately if you try to follow suit, it's going to hurt you. The big boys can come in, the big corporate conglomerates can come in and they can just bleed money for a year or two and they undercut you in pricing and, uh, and bleed you out because they have a sustainability. You with me, Bobby, what I'm, what I'm suggesting here? So we want to say maintain the value and integrity of your pricing. And what we suggest, maintain the price, but create differentiation by adding value to the deal. Now, when you're adding value to the deal, Bobby, there's a lot of ways of doing that. You can add it with uh, 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 a gift incentive. You could add it with a... Uh, you know, buy one, get one free, which is a form of discounting. You could buy one, a BOGO, get one at 50% off. Um, or you could do it in what we call loyalty programs. But what we feel is that for the right type of transaction, when you're able to add in a trip incentive experience, to give to a customer for doing business with you versus the competition, we feel that you're able to offer more of a compelling, exciting, experiential travel package can accomplish that. Um, let me just pause, Bobby, just kind of, I, I've, I've, I, as I often do, I unload a, 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 a fierce attack with concept and up until this point, maybe just bounce some stuff back at you. Hopefully, I'm doing a good job trying to communicate and establishing what I'm trying to cover today. Well, you're, wor you're working with this incentive uh, recognition idea of marketing. Uh, you're working with one of Maslow's Law. Now, a lot of people don't know what that is, but Google it. It's like the, the, the need to be recognized and be appreciated, and that's what you're doing. It's a strong human motivator and, and the fun element, like you're saying, in your trip incentive to surprise a customer or client with a trip, that's a lot of fun. They're yeah. gonna talk about that, I'm sure, and that creates more viral marketing for, for the company. You, you got it, it creates the, today's buzzword in marketing is experiential. Consumers, right. uh, businesses want experiential. Let's talk about the application uh, of how we, sh how we can create this incredible incentive marketing experience. There's typically two types of businesses, right, Bobby? There is what's called the B2B, which is what? Business to business. And then there's B2C, which is what? Business to consumer. Typically, what I'm going to be discussing are great for those guys and girls in the marketplace who are selling B2B, business to business. And let me expand on that. 
You see, when you're selling a, a business to business process, a service, a product, uh, uh, a solution, typically it's not unusual for your businesses that are buying from you to spend 10, 20,000, 40,000, 50,000, 75,000, 100,000, half a million, a million, two million dollars. Those are typically the norm when you're selling in a B2B package. You're selling a software solution, you're selling an accounting system, you're selling computers, you're selling copy machines, you're selling long distance service, you're selling consulting services. You can easily, uh, in that transaction of relationship, you could add value with a nice incentive package. Unlike a typical B2C consumer, in most cases, think about it, it might be hard when you're selling to a B2C, let's just say you're a vendor and you're selling a uh, lunch packages and ultimately that customer is maybe spending 70, 80, 90 dollars a month with you and buying lunches, right? Maybe they're spending 80, 90, 800, 900 dollars a year in buying lunches from you. You see what happens is in that kind of relationship or maybe you're just selling a, a, uh, um, a widget for $32 when you sell it to that customer once a year. The challenge is the volume of business is so low, Bobby, it can be hard to mm -hmm. add an incentive of magnitude into that relationship, meaning that Bobby spent $35 with me this year. What can I really give Bobby back in terms of an incentive for that $35 or $32 expenditure that's going to be compelling. There really isn't much I can do, is there? Right. So in the B2B relationship, when a customer is spending $10,000, $20,000, $50,000, $100,000, $1 or a million dollars with you out there, what we can do is we can offer travel as an incentive, okay? Because there's margins to be able to work with to give back into the, into the, uh, into the relationship. Now, let me talk about travel, Bobby. There is what we call group travel, and then there's individual travel. I want to distinguish the two. This is really important. Bobby, I'm sure in your career, that going back over your career, a lot of times in a B2B relationship, vendors and manufacturers oftentimes have a group trip, a group travel experience that when you buy a certain amount of volume from them, they're going to take you on a group trip with 300 of their other customers. I don't know, Bobby, if you're ever familiar with that concept at all. Definitely, and it was so empowering to know that we were receiving those trips and going with our peers. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. the group trips can be a lot of fun, but here are the limitations with a group trip. Now, I do handle both group and individual. But today's, uh, my mission, my objective is to kind of create a differentiation between the two and show you the pros and the cons. Uh, in those group trips, vendors like them because they can get their top customers. Because when you're spending, imagine, $5,000, $6,000, $7,000, $8,000 to bring your customer, uh, your distributor who's buying from you or a contractor who's buying from you, if you're able to bring them on a trip with their spouse, you're going to spend a lot of money for that week-long trip. So that means what? You only can really appeal to the customers who are buying at the higher levels, right? Mm. You wouldn't certainly spend five, six, seven thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars for a customer who's only buying ten thousand dollars a year from you. I hope that makes sense. The group trip does allow you to appeal to the top-tier customers, but here. That's the, sometimes the inherent challenge is that you're not motivating your entire customer base. You're only motivating the top tier customer. The second challenge is you start having two or 300 people. What type of good quality time are you able to really spend and bond with that customer and his spouse, right? Maybe you have a nice dinner during the event, during the, um, during the, uh, the week-long process, but a lot of times the customer want to go off and do their own thing. And then a lot of times, what happens when the customer, your key customer can't go? They can't make it because their daughter is getting married that week. Right. And they pass on that group trip to their assistant. And now their assistant is going on the trip in place of them. And so where you wanted to bond with the owner of the company, now you're having the assistant take the place of the owner of the company. Or better yet, the owner of the company says, hey, I'm your best customer. I was supposed to go to Cabo San Lucas. 
I can't make it because of my daughter's wedding. What are you going to do for me? Because I can't go. What are you going to do for me uh, separate from this group trip? So you see some of the inherent challenges of the pros and cons associated with the big group trip. You can only reward the big dogs, the big mm -hmm. players. You alienate the rest of your customers. You also sometimes are limited in the interaction, the relationship. I've done group trips, Bobby, with hundreds of people out in the Caribbean of the isle in the in islands together. Sometimes you mix the party atmosphere, the margaritas, the beach, the sand, and all of a sudden you could have a reality TV show going on within a show. Uh, I've been there, I've done it, I've experienced it. So uh, there's a lot of benefits, but there's also it seems today a lot of uh, things to be concerned about when you utilize a group trip. A lot of the clients that I work with, and as you know, Bobby, I work with small companies doing a million, two million dollars a year, and I work with uh, one of my Fortune 50 companies does 70 billion dollars a year, 15th ranked company in the United States, uh, and they take clients away. But a lot of times, year to year, you become married to that group trip. Clients say, where are we going this year? Where are we going this year? And sometimes when you don't want to do it, you become stuck in doing it. It becomes cumbersome, expensive. By the way, you end up taking staff away from the week, right. and they mentally check out the week before they go on the event, Bobby. They check out the week they're at the event, and then they got to check out a, a week after the event to get back into the groove of their long vacation. Uh, so there's a lot of inherent challenges. The solution that we have uh, with my with the company that uh, CMC Meridian uh, is that we feel that individual travel incentive packages offer the best solution and the most flexible solution. Bobby has flexibility to uh, uh, appeal to the big customers and also to the small customers through your entire uh, customer base. And what we suggest is is that we do what we call a tier steps levels that as we do levels that the customer can hit different levels of growth or sales amount and they can get different types of travel experiences based on the level that they hit during the course of the year so we have what we call Bobby the treadmill the treadmill effect that when you start they hit level one they hit level two they hit level three the more they buy from you the more they qualify for it creates a whole uh, opportunity for businesses to increase their loyalty, increase increase the new business opportunities for you. Uh, and it can be a great benchmark uh, to use as a sale, or we call an incremental growth uh, over uh, over last year. But I'll talk more about that when we come back after the break, as I know you're giving me a cue saying, "H, it's time to get paid by the commercial." All right, Bobby. Very good. Well. <laughs> We'll continue with this conversation with H. Mejia on the Business Zone TV show. We're going to talk about more media, marketing, and personal development, entrepreneurship right after this commercial. We'll be right back in 30 seconds. Known as one of the country's top sales and marketing experts, entrepreneur, speaker, and TV personality, H. John Mejia is the driving force behind In The Zone TV, Capital Marketing Concepts, and The Good Life Tampa Bay TV Show. Headquartered in beautiful downtown St. Petersburg, Florida, H. has advised and counseled hundreds of small and medium-sized businesses, including many Fortune 1000 companies. H's sales, marketing, TV, and entrepreneurial expertise comes from more than 20 years of learning, applying, and honing cutting-edge strategies that produce high-impact results. During his career, he has helped companies generate over $1 billion in new and incremental sales revenue. An overachiever all his life, H always brings his A-game of ideas, products, and passion to help clients break through to get their sales to the next level. Isn't it time for you to team up with H. John Mejia and allow him to help you produce the results you are looking for? 
Call now for a free consultation and let H show you how his proven and guaranteed strategies can help you increase sales to the next level. All right, welcome back to the Business Zone TV show. I'm your co-host, Bobby D, with entrepreneur and business strategist, H. John Mejia. Hey, John, lead us through this incentive concept. Very exciting. John. H. John. Did I not say H. John? <laughs> what did I? H. You just said, that's cool, buddy. That's cool. There you go. We are good. Hey, <laughs> hey, Bob, you check check this out. Uh, no, kidding, kidding aside here is that let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and queue up this next page here in, in, in a second. We get ready. Uh, I want to talk about the tiers, the tiers, the levels. Let's go ahead and roll to this uh, sheet here. Okay. And uh, I, I want to show the audience an example here. This is real life scenario. Uh, this program, this concept over the years has helped my clients generate tens of millions of dollars of, of sales and incremental revenue with this concept. Uh, this is a travel award uh, program and notice that you see eight levels there, Bobby. Levels one through level eight, and the concept is real simple. Notice in the column there it says cost. That is the cost, the investment that my customers, my clients make in the gift of that travel incentive package. I want to emphasize these are individual travel packages. Uh, these packages offer wide variety of options, Bobby. You're not stuck to going to one location at one date. The customer, the participants, when they qualify for a vacations, they go when they want to go, where they want to go, with whom they want to go, and experience a vacation with. So in level one, that's a $300 vacation. That's what we call the uh, the drive-away vacation with some gas and, and hotel and golf money included in it. Um, level three, for example, is at $1,350. That's what we call the national flyaway. That includes hotel accommodations, round trip airfare for two, anywhere in the domestic United States. Look at level four, level four, $2,500. That's a, uh, a VIP cruise with airfare, or they can go to Mexico uh, for a four option play pass. Uh, to different parts of Mexico. They can go to Arizona for a spa experience. They can go to a Richard Petty driving school experience. They can go maybe to a Lake Tahoe ski trip or if they want to jet off to the Bahamas. Notice that the packages get nicer, more experiential uh, as the levels go up. At level six, an Alaskan cruise, everybody's dream. Uh, maybe going to Europe. Level seven, going to Ireland or an all-inclusive stay at St. John's or a Mediterranean cruise and airfare. Level eight, let me tell you, Bobby, Super Bowl packages. Hmm. We're going to the Masters Golf Package. I have guys at companies all around uh, the country utilize our products or services, take their top customers who, who qualify to go to the Super Bowl. But notice that we're appealing to all the different levels, one through eight. So the small customer you have at level one, two, and three, you can still incentivize them to do business with you, to give you all their loyalty, to buy from you, and they can qualify for a nice vacation experience and go when and where they want to go. Levels four, five, and six are more for the middle-sized customers that you could attract, you could engage, create excitement, create differentiation in the marketplace, help you stand out your message, your marketing message, to the audience out there and not sell on price but sell on added value experience and then ultimately level seven and eight we want to appeal to your big spenders hey man you and your uh and your friend your spouse going to super bowl with the parties hotel airfare being part of that experience and those are the eight different levels there are no group experiences bobby you're not tying up workers salespeople, employees to go anywhere these trips are individually done. Our team does all the reservation, all the booking process. We make it turnkey to follow the guideline. It's important to know, Bobby, also with our packages, the complete marketing, uh, marketing brochures, the marketing videos, the ways of promoting this to your customer base. is. We're also there to execute that as well, to create that excitement uh, during that sales promotion. The, the last column to the right, this is where there's a lot of flexibility, Bobby. Uh, 
there's going to be either a growth goal or a sales goal. Hmm. And let me differentiate between the two. And I don't mean to get so detailed, but I just get so passionate about it that you could set a sales goal that, hey, if you spend X number of dollars with me, for example, notice level four, Bobby, $62,500 at level four. When you spend $62,500, you're going to qualify for a vacation to Lake Tahoe for a ski trip. You, or you can go to the Bahamas, or you can go to a spa, you can, go to, you can go to Mexico, or you can go to our Richard Petty driving school experience. Your choice. Go when and where you want. Um, so what you're doing is you notice the $2,500 will be funded out of the $62,500. I hope I'm clear on that, Bobby. Is that making sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And, and what's so exciting is with the individualized compared, like I've only experienced group rewards yeah. in the past like i was mentioning earlier and that was exciting but we were always at the mercy of everyone's schedule and the group schedule and you know like we weren't really relaxing this is powerful this is really really exciting yeah. and notice at the super bowl level oh uh, you could you could use three hundred thousand as the as the as the sales target and if you don't want to use this sales target and you want to use what we call an incremental growth target you could do that and Bobby, let me differentiate the two, and this is really important in terms of concept. Let's say that your customer, let's say your customer, existing customer who's been doing business with you, Bobby, your customer buys $105,000 of audio equipment, uh, music, uh, audio uh, music equipment from you every year. One, one mindset might be, hey, wait a minute, that guy is going to give me $105,000 next year. Mm. I don't want to give him anything. Mm. Well, in this example, right, if the sales target was 105000 uh, you would give him uh, level five would be a $4,200 package, right, as a gift. One mindset of owners might be, I don't want to give the guy anything. He's going to give me the 105000 I can make an argument for both, on both sides of the equation, because you know what? Bobby, there's your competition who wants to steal your customer from you. Hmm. Your competition... Is, is right now targeting to get that 105000 and rip that away from you and take the business. So a lot of times I'll tell clients, I don't know, it's kind of like an insurance policy. Wouldn't it be nice to add a little bit of value to the relationship, create a little differentiation, add value, and make sure you keep that $105,000 customer? That'd be one argument. Another perspective would be we can do what's called an incremental growth program, Bobby. And what that means is you only reward customers on the growth over last year. You uh -huh. only reward customers on the growth over last year. You see the difference, right? Big time. So at the $105,000 level, your customer has to increase by at least $7,500 over last year to qualify for level one. Your customer has to do $13,750 to qualify for level two over the baseline from prior year. So in essence, to qualify for level eight, your customer would need to do 105000 plus the $300,000 over the baseline number over last year. So that means they'd have to do what? $405,000 to qualify for a level eight. There's both sides. You could do it on a sales number. You could do it on a growth goal. My job is to work with our, my customer I help you plan, strategize, execute. Uh, you don't need to use the percentages that I use, the 4% percentage factor uh, on the sales or the growth as a reinvestment back. But regardless, the reality is these are what we call self-liquidating programs. You're paying the travel incentive experience that they're going to love. You're paying it for it out of the sales or the growth sales. Uh, typically, these programs are a year long. Uh, you can run smaller programs for three months or six months, and I would just recommend we would pull back maybe some of the levels. Uh, you reward customers at the end of the program. When you run it, uh, when you start it, there is an end date. You reward those people that qualify and hit the target. Uh, we do all the back-end fulfillment, Bobby. Uh, my agency, my our team at CMC Meridian does everything turnkey. We do all the marketing. Uh, we do all the kickoffs for the sales team and get them to buy in, get your sales team excited about it. 
Uh, and we do suggest that you also maybe incentivize the sales team for what we call push-pull marketing, Bobby. Push-pull. The pull is to the customer. You pull the product demand through with the incentive. The push is to incentivize the sales team to get out there and promote it to the customer base. So push-pull marketing strategies is what we oftentimes suggest. Wow. That's really loaded. H, we could go on for a long time, but we're going to wrap it up for today to stay on course. But I just want to add to this and correct me. Obviously, yeah. this incentive program that you've developed is, um, is um, you can mold it to different type of businesses. But at the end of the day, it's, it's like if I'm the business owner, I need to take a percentage of my marketing dollars and reinvest it here so I can grow my business through my current customers. Is that it? I mean, it's just diverting the marketing dollars so it's not really costing me anything at the end of the day to implement this idea. You're, 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 you're right on, Bobby. You need to have a marketing budget. You need to get of people's course. attention. You need to invest in a marketing incentive program to reward your existing customers, to make sure you get all their business, to get all their loyalty. And then we also, every business that I work with, Bobby, there's also a need for getting new accounts, new revenue, new business stream going. And a lot of times that's a challenge that every business in America has that uh, there's not enough time generating new business, new accounts, right. because a lot of times typically the salesperson will uh, like to work with the existing customer. It's more comfortable than going out and cold calling or prospecting for sure. new business. Uh, but that's where the, the livelihood should be invested into the customer and new customer acquisition in using an added value incentive, uh, travel incentive to create differentiation. Right. It's powerful to work through your existing customers because you already have the relationship and I can see the dynamics of this compared to working in the coal market trying to find a new customer. But so Bobby, like, you, you, Bobby, I have to stop right there. They're both equally important. You need new blood. You need the business. That's where, if you don't get new business, your company is dying. Right. So it's just, I want to emphasize, it's just as important to attack the cold new business market and the existing market. Those combined together, it's imperative, Bobby, imperative. Got it, got it. Well, there's always something to learn here. Cold market, warm market, incentive, personalize it, uh, impact your existing customers so they'll keep talking about you and they'll yeah. keep coming back and buying from you. That's basically the dynamics Loyalty, of what you're talking about. Added value. Yeah. You, you right. got about it. Exactly. All right. So uh, the takeaway for today, H, if you can sum that up in a you minute or less, I don't know if that's possible, I'm, but... Not with me. <laughs> Episode five, here are your takeaways. Number one, do not yeah. discount price. Maintain your price integrity. Hold the value of your price. Add value to the relationship, to the deal with an added value incentive. So in doing business with you versus the competition, you're you're getting some you're giving something of value and different and you're not starting to drop in price and because dropping and discounting your price for the long term will not work. Number two, travel is a high perceived value. When you send someone to a football game, you send someone to the Bahamas, you send someone on a cruise or to Alaska or to go to Hawaii or to Cabo San Lucas, that's an experience they'll always remember and they add value to the relationship. Uh, the, the, the true uh, main norm in the travel incentives are going to be in business to business and the B2B relationship because there's enough money being spent in those relationships to be able to take a percentage back into the travel incentives. It's imperative that in this marketplace of competitive products and services and distribution, everybody offers good service. You need to offer good service just to be in the game. Mm. How do you create uniqueness? How do you create a differentiator? How do you create loyalty to buy from you versus the competition? Travel incentives do that. And individual travel incentives, Bobby, do that better than a typical group trip. Uh, we do suggest that staircase approach, right? The levels have different benchmarks to appeal to the small, middle, and large size customers because when you're able to motivate all the way through deep down into your customer base, that's much better than just appealing to your top 5%. Mm -hmm. Drive it all the way through and deep through your customer base to gross sales, 
lift uh, productivity uh, to your sales team. We need to properly market these programs with brochures and videos, and our team does that. Uh, it's important that your sales team buys in. They're like the offensive line on a football team. They better block for the quarterback <laughs> and make some things happen. So we do suggest it would be worthwhile to incentivize the sales team for the push-pull marketing strategy. Uh, I can help you with the marketing, media, sales, incentives. Uh, I can pr produce videos for you. We can make all things happen. Just make sure you check out hjohnmejia.com, hjohnmejia.com, a free consultation. I'll brainstorm with you on incentives, marketing, whatever you need. We can make happen and work for you. And now, Bobby, let's cue up the final quote of the week. Drum roll. Yes. Roll it. Oh, you forgot the drum roll. Okay, that's, that's okay. No, maybe next week we'll get the drum roll. It's not about what you wish for, but rather what you go out and work for. Today's quote of the week, it's not about what you wish for, but rather what you go out and work for. Hopefully you've gotten something meaningful and productive out of the message today. Grab one or two things, implement it, execute, go to the next level, and uh, appreciate your time and consideration at the Hammer community. Ah, beautiful. I knew those football metaphors would come in eventually, and they did today. Cool. Great job, H. All right. Thank you, Bobby. Okay, so it's a wrap for um, the Business Zone TV show, but remember to go to hjohnmejia.com and visit our sponsor, hammerfiber.biz, at that domain, hammerfiber.biz. And also, if you want to catch all the video archives of all previous shows, it's hammercommunity.com forward slash business. Business. You like that H? Business zone. All right. So uh, we'll see you next week. It's a wrap for, uh, for today pretty much, right? And uh, for H. John Mejia and Business Zone TV show, I'm your co-host, Bobby D. Until next time, we'll see you soon.